Today we're talking about Paleo's housing as shown off in last week's gameplay stream. A lot of things were shown, so let's talk about what we've learned and, well, what they talked about. Again, mentioned that this is kind of an early game. You can have a mansion if that's where you want to take wow. this experience to, add a bunch of additions to it. Housing is one of, if not the main progression paths through the game. It will interact with other skills such as foraging and mining in order to actually build rooms and furniture making to decorate. It appears that the houses of the game are made up of a collection of rooms that are put together with you, the player, choosing whether the space between them are open or not, whether a room has windows, and what the styles of said windows might be. It's currently unclear if all the rooms need to be attached to one another or if you can make a detached shed or something on your property. Players can create rooms using a variety of blueprints of different sizes, with each requiring a different amount of resources or time required to build. Once selected, you can donate the required resource and then wait a specific amount of time for the room to be finished. This is a bit contentious, so we'll come back to all of my thoughts on this at the end of the video. One of the big things that's discussed throughout the stream is that housing plots are instanced, and you have control over who can enter, interact with, and decorate your house. On top of this, you'll have access to multiple housing plots if, for some reason, you want to have a project that you want to work on with your friends, and another one for just you yourself. I've heard multiple people share their opinions on the instance housing issue already, with many thinking that it's not really a good thing. Personally, I'll take it over Sword of Legends Online's literal ghost towns where I had my plot, but practically nobody lived in the same universe as me. On top of this, there would also potentially be issues with small neighborhoods if they were server dependent since, you know, people stop playing games and they don't tend to interact with each other. My suggestion for a potential middle ground would be something where four to five players can choose to live in an area where they have individual plots around some centralized community zone. Each player can decorate their individual plot while also working together to upgrade and progress their own small community in that shared space. Maybe doing things like adding a fishing pond or a centralized crafting area, dedicated meetup point, or whatever they want to do. It's up to them, right? It's your game. This, of course, would also wither with time as players again stop playing and you might be stuck in a community by yourself, which I'm sure some people would enjoy. Okay, before we move on to the rest of this video, uh, this video is partially sponsored by Amazon Prime, and by that I mean, did you know that if you have Amazon Prime, you can basically donate Amazon's money to people for free? It requires you to make a Twitch account and link it to your Amazon account, but if you wanna support me and take money from a massive corporations, please consider doing that. There's a link in the description to how to do all of this and my, my Twitch accounts there, so yeah. Up next, I wanted to briefly talk about decorating the house. You can make furniture with the furnishing skill and place items in what appears to be a grid with regular rotations on a 2D plane with no overlapping pieces. This is pretty standard for housing decoration and it doesn't really wow me, nor does it necessarily stand out from the pack. My biggest disappointment here is that I need to attach things to the ceilings in specific spots. Things can't overlap, and I can't really rotate things in crazy ways. If I want to have an upside down coffee table that holds up a bookcase that I laid on its back with a sideways fountain resting on it, why can't I? No, seriously, why can't I? It's just items, right? And before you say, oh, that's just too hard to do, Really? Because you're only storing a tiny bit more information than you're already tracking to do that. The only thing that you'd have to add is a Z rotation to your XYZ rotations. So, you know, I, I do miss the days of having actual control over decor. Also, I wanted to make a parkour map out of the furniture in my house, but I guess that idea is dead. Okay, back to the big, big problem. The timers. I wish that in real life you could add an addition to your house this quickly. You know, it's <laughs> oh like God. four hours, so, like that'd be great. Um, now, I'm not the vindictive type, but they clearly talked about the four hours. 
Do you really want to advertise that the rooms take four hours to make at this size when the tooltip in your video clearly states that it's twice as long? Now, this could be something that changed, but the editing isn't really clear. And personally, I thought this was a pre recorded live stream in order to prevent them from having hiccups like this, but they found multiple ways to put their foot in their mouth through this stream. This is just the one for this video. Four hours is a bit long to be waiting, but you can theoretically go do other things, make dinner, go out to eat, come back and play. Eight hours is a full work shift. So why? No, seriously, why the timers at all? I don't mind small timers for things like crafting, but I really don't like the forced waiting in a game that I'd actively want to play. Singularity 6, why do you want me to not play your game? But Doity, you can just do other things while you wait. Yeah, I could. Or the housing can be designed in a way where adding an addition to your house takes you actual time and effort to complete. Imagine gathering resources to build the walls, making choices over window placement and doors in the process where if you make a mistake, you have to go back and do it again. You know, adding that time. A system that has you collect things to build as you go, step by step. Something that would end up taking time, but if they do it well, also incentivizes players to gather materials, go out into adventure zones for rarer materials, for crazy housing styles, and even group with other players to help each other build and design your houses. Instead of all of this, you get to wait four to eight hours to do something. By the way, this is only for the seven by seven rooms. This could be much longer for the 11 by 11s. They didn't show it. Makes me think. For a game that wants to be seen as an MMO, why aren't you taking inspiration from previous good examples of housing and gameplay from the genre? Why does it seem that all the major decisions seem to be coming from random mobile gotcha game number 37? I don't know. I'm done here. What are your thoughts on housing? Let me know in the comments below and thank you for watching.